Good morning, everyone. How are you? Good morning. It's great to be here. I am so pleased. And it's so exciting what all of you are doing. So it's a real honor for me to be here at the Big M Convergence Conference with engineers, business leaders, investors, all of you who are moving American manufacturing forward. And a special thanks to our host, SME, and your current president, Mike Molnar. So I am so pleased to be here because Mike also serves as the Director of Advanced Manufacturing National Program Office at the National Institute of Standards and Technology, which is an extraordinarily important national research that is resource that is housed at the Department of Commerce. So I am encouraged to see Mike both coordinate policy on the government side and implement it through SME. We need the public and private sectors to work together now more than ever to focus our investments on areas with the highest potential for growth. Today, I want to discuss where the Department of Commerce is leading the administration's efforts to support the expansion of manufacturing in America and where we need your help. The Commerce Department serves as the architect for America's manufacturing policy. Although we do not invest as heavily in manufacturing R&D as the Defense Department, the Health and Human Services Department, or the Energy Department, and we do not directly, we're not directly responsible for employment policy or workforce training that manufacturers need, like the labor and the education departments. And we're not the major regulatory role in manufacturing like the EPA or USDA. However, the Commerce Department does play the lead role in ensuring that all of these efforts are coordinated, integrated, and focused on the needs of you, manufacturers. We do this through the leadership, our leadership role of the White House Office of Manufacturing Policy. Our objective is to break down the silos across the government and encourage meaningful public-private partnerships at every level to move American manufacturing forward. In other words, we're trying to make public-private manufacturing programs and policies work better. So I'd like to outline exactly what that means. The Commerce Department recognizes that to grow our manufacturing base, we must invest in activities like training, R&D, and helping small suppliers be best in class. Government's unique role is to make catalytic investments and convene public-private partnerships. So we have a number of goals, and I want to go through them. First, to ensure that America leads in the discovery, innovation, and production of cutting-edge technologies such as 3D printing, composite materials, and green technologies. Second, to help American communities attract investment that ensure broad prosperity and long-term competitiveness. Third, to advise American manufacturers, especially small and mid-sized firms, on the latest technologies and best-in-class business practices. And fourth, and finally, to insist that employers have a leading voice in federally funded workforce training. While different communities have put some individual components of this approach into play, the Detroit area has brought them all together to create one of the most robust manufacturing centers in the country. Just this morning, the Commerce Department's Economics and Statistics Administration released a new study titled Manufacturing Since the Great Recession. It found that U.S. manufacturing has turned a corner. You all know that. For the first time in over 10 years, both manufacturing output and employment are growing steadily. Since the, the end of the recession, Output has increased 38%, and the manufacturing sector has created more than 640,000 quality jobs. 
Not surprising, Michigan is one of five states that together account for more than half of those jobs. Why? Because Detroit and its surrounding communities have built a manufacturing epicenter that attracts private investment, keeps businesses competitive, and supports good jobs for American workers.